If you want to know how to read stocks reliably, your best bet is to look at two things, gaps and candlesticks. Reading a stock after a price gap is much easier than otherwise. You can reliably read a stock 90% of the time if you look at the gap and the candlesticks that follow it. For this, all you need is a piece of software or an online tool that allows you to convert a stock's price into daily candlesticks, which is what you see here. A gap is simply a literal space between two candlesticks. If you see a gap in a stock's candlestick chart, that's something that's going to indicate the stock being a decent, um, decent trade. One reason for that is the increased volatility that comes with a gap and the higher probability that the stock will radically shift in one direction. I'm going to show you a trade here that I used to make a 104% ROI in one week, all by properly reading this stock due to the gap and the candlesticks. The gap for this stock, the stock's name is BBG, it appeared on August 16th. Now, I didn't immediately make a gap trade after seeing a gap. The reason is there are contradictory signals here. When you look at a gap, you're going to look for a few things. First, you're going to look for the size of the gap. Here, we don't see a large gap. It's only like a dollar in that space from 22 to 23. It's only like a dollar. The first thing you look at is the size. It's either small or large. Here, it's small. The second thing you look at is the volume. The volume, again, is either large or small. Here it's large. Those are contradictory signals because the gap is small, but the volume is large. Generally, we want a small gap and a small volume, or a large gap and a large volume. Here we have a contradiction. So if you're a novice, I would say stay away from this type of play. But I'm going to show you how this type of play can work out if you have enough experience and are good at reading candlestick charts. So what is the correct way to play this stock? The only correct way is to wait it out. You wait it out to see what kind of gap it is. Now you notice I mentioned area gap several times here, area gap, and breakaway gap. There are several types of gaps, but you only really need to know two or three types. One very important one, and the one we're going to look at today, is the area gap. The area gap is associated with a small gap and a small volume. Here we have a small gap, but a large volume, so we don't know if it's an area gap yet. What we're going to do is we're going to wait a few days to look at the next candlesticks and determine whether this gap is indeed an area gap or if we're going to find that it's a different type of gap, known as a breakaway gap. Now, gaps appear... Um, gaps will usually appear within a trading region. So if you notice the trading region is between $21 and $23. When a gap appears within that trading region, that's an area gap. Breakaway gaps tend to appear with outside the trading region. So if we see a gap that's way down here, that's more likely a breakaway gap. And a breakaway gap tends to continue in that direction, whereas an area gap tends to close. In other words, for this gap, what we're looking at is a stock that's likely to drop, thereby closing this gap right here. So what I did was, when I saw this gap, I bookmarked it in my browser. I used the internet tool for this uh, candlestick chart. I bookmarked it, noting to myself that it, it looks like an area gap, but it has a high volume. And if it ends up being an area gap, well, I want to short the stock. Shorting the stock means selling the stock at its current price, with the promise to buy it back later at a later price, hopefully smaller, right? So if we sell it now at $24 and we buy it back, let's say at $16, we've made quite a bit of profit. So what happened next? Well, I waited. I waited a few days. Here's what the chart looked like four days later. So four days later, what we see is, first of all, two candlesticks with tiny, tiny bodies. These tiny body candlesticks tend to imply indecision in the market. Investors don't know whether to sell or whether to buy. When you see this type of indecision, it doesn't really help you read a stock because it really just tells you that nobody knows which way it's going to go, up or down. So you still want to wait when you see these tiny body candlesticks. So again, I waited two more days and then I saw candlesticks that were 
easier to play with, these bigger red candlesticks. Um, I just want to point out that when you see these small bodied candlesticks, it usually is not going to be a long term trend of small body candlesticks. It's usually about to shift directions. What happens is, is the investors are not sure which way the stock is going to go. They have this kind of like internal struggle, and then eventually the market pops in one direction. We want to watch that direction, and what we see here is a downward direction. We see two big downward candlesticks. Now, this third candlestick right here is called a bearish engulfing candlestick because it's red and it engulfs the previous candlestick. What that means is it's very likely that the following trend will be a bearish trend. In other words, the stock will go down. Now, a bearish engulfing candlestick is usually a very reliable candles candlestick in the long run for you'd say about 60% of the stock. But even that is not that far from random. 50% is random, 60% is pretty close. So I'm not going to make a bet just based on this one candlestick pattern, this one red candlestick eating the green candlestick. So I waited one more day and I saw a different candlestick pattern. This is called two black crows. When you have two red or black candlesticks, they're the same. And you notice that the second one has a opening price, which is the top of the red candlestick, pretty close to the closing price of the other candlestick, of the previous day's candlestick, which is the bottom. Now when you see these two red crows in this case, you can be pretty certain, again, that the trend is going to go down. So I have three very strong indicators here that the trend is downward. One is the area gap. It looks like an area gap now. In other words, it looks like it's going to fill. Second, the bearish engulfing candlestick. Third, the two black crows. We have three indicators telling us the stock is likely going to drop. And because of that, on this, after I saw this candlestick, I decided the next day I'm going to short the stock. So I'm going to sell it now and buy it back later. That's what I did. Let's see what happens. Indeed, the next couple days, so I, I sold it about here, about 23 bucks. Um, actually, I think I waited for it to go, go up in price a bit. But anyway, what we do see is a confirmation. It really does continue going downward. Now, the gap filled on this date, whatever it is. It filled because now we see that the top of this previous candlestick, where the gap occurred, is equal to the bottom of this new candlestick. What we're going to do, in general, is when we make that play, when we buy that stock or when we sell the stock or short the stock or whatever, for an area gap, we want to get out when the gap closes. Now, if you're a conservative investor, here's where you get out. You take your, you know, two or three dollars, two or one or two dollars profit per share. So if you shorted 100 share of stock, you would have made 100 dollars in this week-long trade. Um, if you're more of a risk-seeking type, what you're going to do is you're going to analyze the candlesticks pretty much every day. So at the end of each day, you spend like five to ten minutes looking at the candlesticks, figuring out if the trend is going to hold, if the trend is going to reverse, if it's stabilized, and make your decision based on that. And because I'm more of a risk-seeker, that's what I do. What I did was I saw, well, the trend seems to be pretty solid in place. We continually see these red candlesticks, downward candlesticks, and if you look at the stochastic chart up here, you can easily get a stochastic chart for any stock online. You're going to look at the stochastic lines. There's a percent %K line, a percent %D line. Generally, you want to look at the percent %K line. If it's around 50%, you're okay. In other words, the trend that you're seeing right now is probably going to hold. However, if you're at these extreme ends, if you're like at 20 or below, or 80 or above, it usually implies that the stock is uh, oversold or overbought, respectively. And in that case, you can often expect a reversal of the trend. Of course, you should do some other analyses there, but that's not that's kind of out of uh, the content of this this current video. Right now, we're just looking at the general way to read a stock 
It's a reliable method to look at the candlesticks post gap and then make a trade that way. So that's what we're talking about here. Um, and what I saw was a continuation of this downward trend. So I decided I'm going to hold on to my position. I'm not going to buy the stock back just yet. I'm going to see what happens every day at the end of the day. And that's what I did. And the result was the gap closed, but it actually continued downward for a long time. Now, because I am a daily trader, I look at the candlestick every day and determine when I want to get out. I decided this green candlestick that looks like a hammer is not something I want to see in this trend. I decided the next day to get out. So, um, well, generally, why, why did I decide at that point? The hammer candlestick usually implies, it looks like a hammer, right? It usually implies a reversal of the trend. And I also saw that the stock was the stock stochastic was down here around 20%. That scared me because it says that the stock is likely oversold. So the candlestick plus the stochastic scared me out of my position. I decided I've already made a profit more than I expected. I'm going to go ahead and buy the stock the next day. So I bought it on the next day. Um, I made about four dollars per stock shorted. Of course, if you're even a stronger, uh, if you have a stronger level of risk acceptance, you could just wait one more day. Say, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna bear it for one day, see what's gonna happen the next day, and you probably would have seen another bearish engulfing candlestick, and decided, well, I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna see where it goes. You would have made a lot more profit than I. Um, but at the same time, you really need to know what your risk level is. If you have a high level of risk acceptance, you could ride it all the way down. If you're medium, I'm higher than normal, you would probably get out where I got out. If you're very, very conservative, you'd probably get out once the gap closes, about right here. But reading the stock is pretty easy, using the candlesticks and the gaps. And if you read it correctly, there's lots of room for lots of profit. Um, reading a stock doesn't really require a lot of work, as you've seen from this very, very short video. This probably takes you 10 minutes to open the trade and then 10 minutes to close the trade. Uh, and depending on what kind of trader you are, you might be a stock trader, you might be an options trader, reading the stock can bring you in a large amount of profits or you know just consistent small profits. For this particular trade, I simplified the explanation by saying I shorted the stock. In fact, what I did was I bought a put option which is essentially the same as shorting the stock but with leverage. And what I got out of this play was an ROI of 104% and I'm going to show you that right now. This is from my personal brokerage account. The stock we were looking at is BBG, right? I bought two put options. I didn't spend a lot of money. I bought two put options at about 300 bucks, you know, plus commission. And then I sold them back when you know, at the point I just showed you, I sold them back at that point, and then I made about, you know, 600 bucks minus commissions, so about 550. So that trade was overall 104, a 104% ROI trade within what a week? Let's see, from the 22nd to the third, so that's like one or two weeks, right? That's a very very common options trade um, profit margin that you can get if you successfully read a stock after a gap. Now, if you have any questions about this, please just go to DamonVario.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. You can download a free gap guide. And if you just have a question, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. And please subscribe. If you subscribe, I will be encouraged to post more videos of this type. Thank you very much.